Amen. How many does your heart good to know that there's young people who are falling in love with Jesus? Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Curtis does a great job uh, on Wednesday night. Actually, my children, we have a 16, 14, and a nine-year-old. My son came home uh, the night after the night of worship. He's like, Dad, that was probably the most powerful thing I've ever been in. And so as a parent, uh, you know what? It's important. We, we, uh, in, we model for them a passion and love in our relationship with Christ. Um, and then we give them opportunity where uh, they um, can fan into flames what Paul told Timothy. So fan into flame that gift that's been placed inside of your life, that passion that's inside of your heart. And um, it actually plays into our scripture today. We're going to land in two places. We're going to go to Psalms chapter 78 and we're going to go to Luke chapter 8. So you can hold your uh, place, put your finger in that, um, uh, those two uh, places of verse if you are clicking or sliding iPhones or iPads. It's a little more difficult, but you can uh, get there pretty quickly. Are we feeling good this morning? Come on, church family. Are we feeling good? Amen. And uh, it's Thanksgiving week. Some of you are off uh, a few days this week. Uh, Black Friday's coming up. And, um, you know what that means? It means you're about to go in debt. I'm just kidding. All right. All right. So uh, how many are thankful uh, that he is alive and well? We can be thankful for our family. We can be thankful for his blessings in our life. And uh, let's not forget uh, really what the purpose of having these moments Moments in our calendar is all about, and, um, and be vocal with it. Uh, tell somebody, somebody, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for our friendship. I'm thankful for our relationship. Um, the Bible says that we enter his gates with, <laughs> y'all, sound, y'all sound really excited. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come on, somebody. Maybe an attitude of gratitude will shift and change uh, where we're at, our perception, our realities. And so uh, I think it's a great week to have that reminder inside of our heart. And uh, so we've been in this message series entitled uh, Tell Your Story. Last week we had Clay Dyer. Uh, We had just a great time together in here. We had eight people give their life to Jesus last week. Come on, somebody. Can we give the Lord a hand clap and praise for that? Absolutely awesome. And uh, so we always celebrate uh, salvation and we celebrate um, men and women falling in love with Jesus. But in this Tell Your Story message series, it's really been echoing inside my heart just the importance of stories, the importance of narratives, even in society, whether you realize it or if it's a subconscious issue, uh, stories are important. You go on social, any social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, most of them uh, use that, even that word to say, your storyboard. And so there's, there's a story being written. There's a story being told. There's a narrative of, in your life and in your heart, in your marriage, in your family, in your children, in every aspect of your life. And even biblically, have you ever wondered how uh, from generation to generation to generation, I'm gonna show you first here where we're gonna lay in Psalm chapter 78, starting in verse number six, we verse six through eight this morning. It says, so the next generation might know. So the next generation might no. Do you realize, even in this room today, especially we get into second, third service, we'll have uh, our, our teenagers sitting in the room, we'll have our college age, we'll have our senior saints, we'll have our, our middle age, midlife crisis people, we'll have all the above, all underneath one context, an umbrella that we're sitting here so that the next generation might know. We like to sometimes sit back and point fingers and uh, shift the blame game on other people. But the truth is, is that the generation coming behind us can only be a product of that which we have poured into their life and into their heart. Are you with me this morning? That it's, it's what we deposit inside of them. When you cross your arms, step back, and you stand on the sideline, moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, and you stand on the sideline of life, and you don't actually engage with the next generation, and you leave it up to the storyboard of YouTube and Facebook and CNN and Fox News and MSNBC and society and political correctness, and you let the posture of what's being poured into their life be the, become the narrative of what the political correctness of society is, my friend, then we have failed. The truth is we need to realize that what you say, what you pour into, the story that you tell about your life needs to be handed down to the next generation. And that's what he said here. So the next generation might know them even, them, then even the children not yet born. And they will, they, I'm gonna get this right this morning, right? And they in turn will teach their own children. What's he saying? So each generation could set its hope on God. What's he saying? He says there's a ripple. Come on, everybody say ripple. 
There's a ripple. The title of today's message is their ripple of testimony. Do you remember as a kid, maybe you went to the pond, I go to my, my grandma and, and papa's house out in Faultful, and they had a pond in their backyard. And as kids, we would take rocks and my, my papa would come out and he'd say, y'all quit throwing rocks in the pond, but we'd love to throw a rock and see how big of a, the initial splash. And then there was always a ripple. A ripple from the impact that happened. And the truth is today that your testimony should have a ripple. It should ripple to the generation and the generation to the next generation. That there should be a ripple that God does something inside of your life, dad, mom in this place, and it ripples into your children. That it ripples even into your grandchildren. And the question is, how do I let the ripple? See, ripple goes in good and bad forms. There's, there's ripples that, that, that you maybe feel the, the pressure, you feel the weight, and the ripples of, of negativity that continues to go out. And then there's the ripples of God's blessing and God's purposes and God's plan and God's destiny inside of our life. And so this morning, we're going to go through four really quick ripples that how your story, come on, your story uh, affects your family, your story affects your coworkers, that the ripple should ripple out, when God makes a splash, when God makes an impact, when God makes a, a point of, of connection with me, there should be a ripple that happens into my marriage. There should be a ripple that happens into my children. There should be a ripple that's happened the day comes whenever I have grandchildren. Are y'all with me this morning? So here we're going to go to Luke chapter 8, verse 34 through 39. Very familiar story to some of you. And I actually had the opportunity to visit this city um, as we were on the Sea of Galilee. And at a time I went to Jerusalem, we crossed the Sea of Galilee and uh, stood in this city where they were known for farming pigs, right? They were a pig farming community. And we pick up this story where Jesus shows up and he encounters a demon possessed guy. They were so demon possessed that the Bible says that his, he was chained and he was even locked together. So he was violent. And uh, they, for years, I'm, I'm setting the story prior to this, for years he had been chained and uh, he was uh, naked in the, around the tombs. And so uh, he refused to wear clothes. He was that oppressed and uh, that overcome by the demonic principalities. And so we're going to jump into where Jesus has this story. Luke chapter 8, verse 34 through 39. Starting verse 34. When the herdsmen saw, right? I want you to look at how many times we, we see the word saw and heard, saw and heard that whenever the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it to the city. There's that word, that, that testimony. They told it to the city and in the country. Number one there in your notes is this, is the testimony of what happened. It's kind of interesting when we start thinking about the word testimony. You know, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, that we shall be endued with power when the Holy Spirit comes in our life, that we may be what? That we may be what? Witnesses. What's a witness, Brad? A witness is what you saw or what you experienced. Simply told that there should be an aspect to my life of what I walked through, of what I saw, what I experienced. And so all of a sudden there's this part of testimony of what just happened, what I saw. And you can look at it from the demon possessed man's perspective of what he had been battling and been walking through and, and what happened in his life. And he, he might tell the story of, man, I, I, I was overwhelmed by the love and the peace of God and the tormenting demonic oppression that was in my life. So his perspective on the story might be a little bit different than the guy who has known this, this other man who said over here, and I've watched him even as a young boy, I was, I was growing up and I knew that there was this demon possessed guy in the tombs. And all of a sudden on that day, his perspective was, I saw Jesus say uh, to the demonic spirits, flee. And all of a sudden this man was made whole. So his perspective of watching what happened was part of the story that was being told. I, I want you to catch this with me today. What happens in your life is what you saw, what you experienced, and what you heard, what you felt. It's part of the testimony of, of who he is. And so this morning, I want you to, to begin to realize and recognize. You say, Brad, I don't know a lot of Bible verses. I can't ever tell my testimony. I can't quote all the scriptures, my friend. If you have a story to be told of his goodness, you don't have to have a, a seminary Bible degree to have a story in your life. Are you with me this morning? Come on, somebody. 
I want you to realize you have a story. What, what's my story, Brad? It's just what, you, it's what you've walked through. It's what you've experienced. It's the testimony that you have of his goodness in your life. It's the, the realization with your eyes. God, I've been blessed because I've got oxygen in my lungs. I've been blessed. Maybe you grew up in a great family and you grew up in a great household and that's what's happened in your life. Or maybe you, you grew up and, and it was a very broken situation with a lot of manipulation and a lot of uh, negativity or whatever your story, whatever happened, that's number one there in your notes, whatever happened, it's just a part of your story. What did you see? What did you feel? What did you experience? And the truth is, as you begin to look back on that story that's been told of your life, my friend, there's peaks and there's valleys. There's climactic moments. There's plot twists. There's villains. There's different characters that come on the scene. And as you look back in your life, the one thing you should be able to say is, you know what? He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. God has always been there for me, even amongst my unfaithfulness and the unfaithfulness of other people in my life. God has always been there and he's always been good. He's been there. So the part of your story that's just what's happened. And we've got to tell it. And it takes us to number two there in your notes this morning. It's a testimony of transformation. I love this. Look at verse number 35. People rushed out to see what had happened. People rushed out to do what? To see, to see, to ex what happened. What happened here? They, they rushed out to see what I heard, what I experienced, what I just walked through, the story that's being told. They rushed out to see what had happened. And soon a crowd gathered. And soon a crowd gathered. Number two in your notes, simply this morning, is this, is a testimony of transformation. When Jesus shows up on the scene, my friend, there should be transformation. He takes the blind to seeing, takes the deaf to hearing. He takes ashes and gives you beauty. He takes hurt and fear and worry and anxiety and gives you hope and purpose and destiny. There should be a shift. That's why he says that you were born again. There's some people who say, I was born this way, Brad. Well, you may have been born that way, but you're not born again that way. Come on, somebody. That when I'm born again, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are made new in my life and my heart because now I'm a child of the King. That is that transformation that happens in your testimony that you said, I once was there, but I'm not there anymore. I once was lost, but now I've been found. As you're telling your story to the next generation, as you're telling your story to your coworkers, as you're telling your story to your, to your neighbors, as you're telling part of the testimony of how God has been in your life, my friend, it has to be a story of transformation because we serve of God that transforms us by his love, his mercy, and his grace in my life. See, too many times I hear people start telling their story and they, they want to kind of put trophies on the wall. Well, I was in prison. Well, I was a drug dealer. Well, I was this and I was that. And we almost make the aspect of the bad stuff in our life the big, the big part of the story. And the truth is the big part of the story was the transformation that God did inside of my life by his power and by his love inside of my heart. Are you with me this morning? It's part of transformation that there has to be a change, that there has to be a shift in my life, the way I think, the way I act, the way I breathe, what I laugh at, what's important to me, what my passions, what gets my time, my talent, my treasure is a story of transformation. And that's what happens to this demon-possessed young man, that all of a sudden what he was tormented by, listen to me, what he was tormented by was transformed to a place of peace. I have a simple question for us today. As you're telling this story, what discourages you? What gets you down? What gets you depressed? What fills you full of anxiety? What causes worry inside of your life? And my friend, today I, I want to challenge you to say, hey, you know what? I've been transformed. I once was suicidal, but now I, I found hope and purpose. I once was down and depressed, but now I've found love like I have never known before that God is a God of transformation of our hearts inside of our lives. It's a part of your story. It takes me to number three right there inside of your notes this morning is the testimony of rejection. I love, I love this part of the story. You know, everybody won't get excited about transformation in your life. Everybody won't get pumped up and say, oh, well, it's just a phase he's going through. He'll, he'll come back to where we're at. 
during third service today, and uh, some of them watch actually the live stream during this service, we have a drug and alcohol recovery ministry. We call it our outreach service. And um, so this place will be uh, really pre- pretty full. Um, and it, they, the, there's a lot of people that don't get excited when they start having transformation. Why? Your drug dealer or your pill pusher or your pill popper aren't going to get excited when you're not buying their product anymore. The enemy is not getting excited in your life. Maybe t- today you say, Brad, I never would do drugs in my life. Man, the enemy is not going to get excited when you quit buying into the doubt, the fear, the anxiety, the rejection, the hopelessness, the worry, the, the fear, uh, the, the, the overwhelming. He, he doesn't get excited to let you go into the things of God. And so today, whenever we say, what does that look like? What do you mean the testimony of rejection? Let's see what happened here in verse number, um, flip over to the thing. Verse number 37 says, then all the people in the region of Gerasenes begged Jesus to go away and to leave them alone for a great wave of fear swept over them. All the people said, Jesus, go away. We don't want you here. Why? Part of it's because he just watched this one man or this one farmer just watch his entire uh, livestock run into the sea and drown themselves. If you read the rest of the story, when Jesus cast out the demons from the man, uh, he gave him permission to go into the pigs and the pigs tore out running and went and drowned themselves in the Sea of Galilee. So that guy wasn't very happy because Jesus just cut into his uh, source of income Jesus is cut into his ability of what he does for a living. And, and so this whole community is in a little bit of an upraise. There's those who cling. And I want you to hear me today. Not everybody will be excited about transformation in your life. Not everybody's excited to hear your story. Not everybody's excited because there's some people that are addicted to brokenness. There's some people that are addicted to drama. There are some people that cannot live their life without being addicted to that drug of negativity inside of their heart. There are some people, my friend, that will not be excited for you to, to see you try to shift your story, for you to, to share your testimony testimony of God's goodness for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. There are some people that will actually reject you because they don't want to go down the path of of letting God be God inside of their life. They'd rather sit and soak and sour and stay exactly where they're at. And that's exactly what, what had happened inside of this community is they rejected Jesus and they rejected people. Do you know we still are men and women of free will and free choice? Come on, somebody. You say, why wouldn't everybody be excited about Transformation. Why won't everybody be excited about God? Why won't everybody be excited about his purpose and destiny in his life? It's because there are those who will reject and the day will come when they will have to stand in front of God and give an account for his love that they rejected in their life. Number four, Ben, don't you go ahead and come up with me this morning. Tell your story, the ripples. Say, so why did you say tell your story And the ripples, because I want you this morning to realize how life ripples, how life looks like. Number four is the testimony to tell. What do you mean a testimony to tell, brother? Let's see what they continued on in verse number 38 and 39. The man who had been freed from the demons begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him home saying, no, go back to your family and tell Tell them what? Tell them everything that you've experienced. Share your story. You know, it's a shame as we gather over this Thanksgiving holidays. I want you to look around the room and see your family members and see your brothers and sisters and cousins and aunts and uncles and nephews and, and say, hey, hey, how is their relationship with the Lord? Usually whenever I go to our family stuff, they always call on me to pray. <laughs> You're the pastor. You're supposed to have this prayer thing down. <laughs> and so it's usually, hey, Brad, would you mind saying the blessing? I don't mind it at all. But I, want, I, want, I wanted, before we walked out of this place, for our heart to be cultivated. And Jesus looks at this man. He says, hey, yeah. Uh, You could go with me, but no, this is what I want you to do. Here's my will for your life. Go and live your life whole before your family. Go and live your life whole before the people who know you best, people who know your problems, 
where you were, know what you went through. And sometimes this is tough because your family knows uh, your, your habits. Your family knows what you do. Your family knows uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The, 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 your family's seen you at your best, and your family's probably has seen you at your worst. And he looks at me and said, no, I want you to go and tell. Go tell and show your family what I've done in your life. Go tell of all the things that has happened because you had an encounter with God. My friend, we bear a responsibility to let the ripples you know what they said in the Old Testament in, in Deuteronomy? Moses says, tell the generations and share the story. That's why they even instituted Passover meals because they would tell the story of, of the Exodus. and They'd tell the story of the Red Sea that it was passed down from generation to generation to generation. And my heart can't help but be compelled today to say, how are we rippling? Are we rippling into the next generation? Am I de making deposits into my children and my grandchildren? Am I, am I telling my story that whenever the day comes that, that I'm no longer here and I take my last breath, that people are, are, can still tell stories of, hey, do you remember Remember this? Do you remember that? We love those stories, and I, I'm awakened today to the fact, my friend, that we have to make those deposits in the next generation. We've got to tell the story. Tell the story of his goodness. Tell the story of when God showed up supernaturally. Tell the story of where God met me in the middle of a dark moment and a dark hour. Tell the story of his supernatural provision in my life. Tell the story of when he healed my body. Tell the story of how you handle and steer anxiety, depression, and worry. Tell the story to the next generation behind us because how will they hear unless someone's willing to tell them? We overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. This is our testimony. It's our testimony. And sometimes that testimony might bring rejection. It did in this story. Think about this. 2,000 years after this story happened, we're still reading and talking about it. That that action that happened on that day on the seacoast of Galilee, we're talking about in November 2021 right here on Main Street in Hearts, Alabama because that ripple continues to echo That ripple continues to reach more. That ripple continues to, to be relevant to your heart and to my heart. That that big splash that happened on that day, my friend, there's a story still being told. I've got a question for us today. What are we making such a big splash that the ripple is going to go from generation to generation to generation? That my dad made splashes that are rippling in my life. Remember me talking at the beginning of the service how it could be negative or it could be positive? A ripple of somebody who was an addict and a drug dealer, an abuser, a manipulator. You're still dealing with the enemy knocking on those doors of your life because that's what you've always seen modeled in front of you. Or maybe you've seen modeled in front of you hope, purpose, destiny, believing God, trusting in him, being faithful, being consistent. And that ripple continues because I can look back and say, Lord, what, the, what my father deposited in my life tell your story. I want us to pray together this morning because you've got a story, my friend. You might be rejected for your story, but that's okay. They told Jesus, get out of here. We don't want you in our city. We don't want you in our family. We don't want you in our society. And so I got a challenge for you today. To ask yourself that question. God, what have you done in my life? And Brad, I don't, and maybe you say, I had somebody tell me this week, Brad, I don't feel like I really do have a story. Maybe you've not had many mountain peaks and valley lows. You've just been kind of just plain Jane. That's okay too. That's part of your story because guess what? He's the God of the plain Jane. He's the God of the, the just consistency. And my story is I've just been faithful to God and he's been good to me. And I thank God that he's blessed me in my life. Maybe that's your story. Every head bowed, every eye closed in this place. I want you to ask a simple question. Just say, Holy Spirit, how does this apply to me? Whether you like it or not, listen to me. I want you to realize today that that ripple 
You're rippling into your children. You're rippling into your grandchildren. You're rippling into the next generation. My friend, the easy thing to do is to sit back and complain about what society has become. The hard thing to do is for you to make a splash and try to make a ripple to affect people. And so Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and apply this word to our heart this morning. Apply this word to our heart, Lord, that our testimony of your goodness, Lord, our testimony of your goodness, God, is powerful. Lord, I bless your people today with that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. If you're in this room this morning, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I want you to simply say, Holy Spirit, how does this apply to me? Maybe you're worried about being rejected because people are gonna make fun of you. My friend, no, they're not. It's your story. It's the narrative of your life. God will be faithful to you. Jesus, we love you. Go on, just write the red, just tell him. Say, Jesus, I love you. I love you this morning, God. We thank you for your goodness. Will you stand up on your feet with me this morning? I'm asking some of our leaders to come. If you need prayer for anything, these guys will be down here. Uh, trustees, deacons, staff members, you guys come be ready to pray. But here's my challenge. All right, everybody loves challenges, all right? Here's my challenge for you this week. I want you to tell your story. Specifically, I want you to tell your story on if you're at your dinner table with your family or you're, you're where you can, maybe I ain't seen that cousin or seen that uncle or seen that neighbor. I mean, I ain't seen them in forever. Tell, their, tell your story just of God's goodness in your life, right? Just take advantage of that moment. And the second thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to take the challenge of what the enemy meant for evil in, in social media. We're gonna flip the script. We're gonna use it for his advancement of his kingdom. I want you to go on your social media platform and, and tell your story. There's been several of you already have done that. You can go to the Life Church of Alabama or Life Church Coleman website and you can see some of the stories being told. Tell your story. Tag us in it so we can help share your story and just take that platform and storyboard and see lives and hearts. And like, oh, I didn't know that about so-and-so. When Aaron and I, we lost a child in between um, Carter and Cooper extremely painful moment in our lives when she had that miscarriage. But the weeks coming after that, the number of women who walked up and put their arm around her and said, hey, that happened to me. And like, no way. And we literally laid in bed one night and said, I, I didn't realize that this has affected so many couples. And so that story needs to be told because there's some people listen to there's some people that are walking through situations right now and they feel like they're isolated, they're on an island and nobody's ever battled this before in their life and nobody's ever had trouble in their marriage and everybody comes in and acts like they're in love and hug, hug, kiss, kiss. But the truth is, maybe you've went through a story and, and your encouragement that you can make it through this situation. Maybe there's ears that need to hear and be encouraged by the fact that they hear your story, that, that you got fired from a job, but then God, God worked it all out and actually gave me a better job, that I lost my child and, and it was hurt my heart and it broke my heart, but God still saw me through it. That our story, my friend, will bring encouragement. It'll bring hope. It'll bring purpose. It'll bring destiny. It will bring life where the enemy meant death. Are you with me this morning? Share your story and bring honor and glory to him and encouragement to every man and woman that see how it ripples. I had no idea that my story would ripple all the way to there. I had no idea that my story would reach the next generation all the way to there, my friend. No story is too small and insignificant. But you can't share it and let God take what the enemy meant to destroy you and use it for his glory. Can I pray for you this morning? Pastor Anthony's gonna lead us in a song after I finish praying. If you need prayer for anything going on in your life, a lot of sickness going around, a lot of issues, but he's God of all, amen. Can we just lift our hands and we're gonna pray and just declare his goodness. Father, we thank you, God, for every man, woman, and child in this room. God, I thank you for your love that is unending. God, I thank you for your promises, God, that are full of hope, purpose, and power. God, I pray today, God, that every one of our hearts would be quickened, God, to realize how good you have been in the middle of every moment 
of every day, Father, Lord, that you've never left us, you've never forsaken us, God, that we didn't maybe understand why we were going through some painful situations, God, but today we can stand on top of those situations, God, and realize there is a story to be told, Lord, that we may encourage the next generation, we may encourage those around us, God, we may let life resonate inside our hearts and lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bless your people today. God, I speak protection, I speak hope, I speak destiny, I speak, Father, God, faith-filled days in front of them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we praise you for everything you have done and everything you're going to do. Lord, we love you this morning. And everybody said, amen. Pastor Anthony's going to lead us out of here. One last worship song, right? He'll dismiss us uh, here in a moment. Can we give, if you need prayer, there'll be a few folks hanging out down here. Can you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout of praise this morning? Come on, church family. He is a good God this morning. Hey, well, I am so honored that you have taken a few minutes out of your busy schedule to join us via technology in our online campus. And I want to give you a personal invitation to not just join us online, but actually join us in person. Our Coleman campus meets at 9 and 11, located there just off exit 299 south of Coleman. And then our Hartzell campus meets at 8, 30, 10, and 11, 30 every single week where we would love for you and your family to connect in, to be a part of a local body uh, of loving and caring people. There's something for absolutely every age group. And if we can serve you in any way, form or fashion, drop us a comment there in the comment section. We would love to pray for you. We would love to be a part of the journey that Christ has you on as we're all just trying to live life forward as followers of Christ. God bless you.